Just listen to this. One of my favorite sounds in the bush is little lion cubs begging for milk. It's very entertaining. Now, it was hugely interesting is that we had the four young cubs that were suckling and then the one at the back there, which is not of this litter, he's slightly bigger and it looks like a little male, was here and was suckling actually before the four came in and so she was aloe suckling that one there. Now it's naughty because he shouldn't really be suckling, he's old enough not to suckle, but he was trying his luck and then she lost the plot completely and she stood up and growled and hissed at them and kind of moved and now she's lay down and she sees that all her cubs are feeding and everything is much better now. So it's all calmed down again, but for a second there, there was growling and there was squeaking. And look, you can see she's still showing her teeth towards that older cub. You'll hear her sort of grumble every now and then as she just sort of moans and says, don't you think about coming and drinking milk? So even though they will let others suckle from time to time, they generally prefer their own to suckle from them and they'll make sure that their own gets first access to the teats. Isn't this cool? So this is where the other two females were lying. We're a little bit further to the east of where we first found them. And it's amazing because we drove right past these two females when we were trying to find the rest of the pride. And we bumped into the cubs with that other female long before we ever saw these guys. And we literally drove within about, I would say, 30 meters of these lionesses. But because they're lying down flat in the grass, around them is fairly long. It's almost impossible to see them. So I believe a lot of you are talking about how adorable it is to see the little cubs suckling and sort of whinging and squeaking and it is one of the best things to see. I love when little lion cubs make that noise. It's got to be one of my favorite sounds in the bush and to watch them sort of interact with their mom and the other lionesses in the pride is always a absolute privilege. And Taylor was saying we're very fortunate to do what we do and these kind of moments reinforce that. So, you know, Taylor had this morning that leopard and lion saga and in this afternoon the softer side of lions with the cubs suckling. So very lucky indeed. You'll find now that they itch a little bit around their elbows, so that's all just the scratching around where that mange is, but you can see how much better the older cub looks than the younger cub. It's got a bit of sort of patches of mange, but it's not as bad, not nearly as bad as what you see on the younger ones. So as they get older they'll start to grow out of it a little bit, and I remember actually seeing these older cubs a while ago and it was far worse than what we're actually seeing now, so eventually you'll get out of it. And he's going to be a stocky young fella if it is a boy. Can't see nicely. Oh, off it goes. It's now running back to which its mom, I think, because the other older cub is up at the top there where the other female is. And just watch how this lion disappears. The color is perfect, but what you will see is the black tip to the tail and the black ears. And that's why they have them, is so that they can see one another when walking through thickets like this. It black contrasts so well against this light colored grass. It's absolutely perfect. Everything's settling down a little bit. And the cubs have all got their teeth to feed on and that's the nice thing when you just four of you is that there are four teats and so each one can find a place to suckle. Except if you're at the bottom it does get a bit uncomfortable because everybody else squashes you. So it's a bit of a bun fight, particularly now when they get a lot larger like this. It becomes much harder for them all to fit there. And you'll find if they start sort of squabbling with one another that will trigger mom to get a little bit upset and she'll then sort of growl at them and maybe even stand up and move out the way and stop them from suckling. Now I was looking at the third female which is the one lying to our right here who theoretically should be the one that has new cubs and I can't see any sort of suckle marks at the moment. I'm waiting for her to try and roll back towards me again so I can get a definite look but I don't see too many suckle marks there either. So, Nigel from the UK, you say all they need now is a big screen TV for to complete a lazy Sunday afternoon. Well, indeed, Nigel, they would be the perfect way for the Lions to kind of take it easy. And I wonder what they would watch. Maybe they'd watch something about buffalo, and they could then see techniques on hunting buffalo. Maybe that's a new TV series for the Lions, or Life Within the Pride. And I wonder if it, they would watch trashy reality TV, or 
if they would watch the documentaries. It would be interesting to know. I wonder what you guys all think. Hashtag Safari Live. What do you think Lions would watch on a Sunday night? Should they have a big screen TV? And we're just taking it very easy for a Sunday night movie or series. I <laughs> say... Megs reckons that they would be watching Keeping Up with the Inkahuma Pride. Well, hopefully the Inkahuma Pride is not uh, as sort of drama-filled as what other TV shows with the same sort of, well, the similar sort of title would be. But yes, Megs, I reckon that would be good. Hopefully the Inkahuma Pride would be around enough for the TV series to air and for it to be shown, because they seem to be elusive of late, so we certainly wouldn't have been able to give too many updates to that program. And hopefully they will come back soon and we'll see them. Or the Sticks will start spending more time here. It would be quite something if the Sticks did spend more time in this area. I reckon they'd also be a fan. The females would be a fan of how to raise children. I think that would be another one that they would use. Now you see that little cub. This cub just popped its head up. So it's probably heard the others up at the top there. And it's now going to go back and investigate what's happening up there. What is it missing out on? That the older siblings are up to the top there. And what the female up there is doing. So you'll find they move around quite a bit. And the others won't be too sad about that. Because it opens up a spot for them to feed. Now it's torn between which way to go. Nope. Going to carry on up the hill. So, Steph, you're asking what would happen if a male lion comes around. Well, it depends on which male lion we're talking about. If it is an unknown random male lion, well, that male lion is in for an absolute hiding. He's going to have a situation where he's going to get these three females coming at him at full speed to protect these cubs. They're going to try and defend the cubs as much as possible, get between him and the cubs, and make sure that the cubs get time to run away and they can then keep the cubs safe. If it's one of the Birminghams, they might sort of get up and look for a while, and once they recognize who it is, there might be a little bit of growling and hissing, but once they realize it's a Birmingham male, they'll then calm down. They know that those males are the dominant males for this area, and in all likelihood of the fathers for these cubs, because the sticks really have only mated with them, and then you'd find the male would probably just plonk down and not really do too much. So it just depends on which male had to arrive here as to what would happen. Now it's getting quite dark, so I think what we're going to do is probably start thinking about switching into IR. Like I was saying, these cubs are too young for us to spotlight, and this is the best part about the IR. Rather than us leaving them, we can just turn off all our lights and sit completely in the darkness with them and we won't have to worry about too much at all. Sorry? So Craig's going to go on to IR now. He's just telling me that he's going to do so. So we'll just keep the IR open and I don't even have to worry about interfering with these cubs in any way. The reason why we don't spotlight them is twofold. One, their eyes haven't developed very well yes, yet and two is a spotlight in the bush is often an attractant to other predators. You'll find hyenas in particular have learned that spotlights in the thickets at night in particular generally means a predator and they'll actually come and investigate spotlights. So if we have all our lights off then generally the hyenas are not too worried about it and they'll actually leave us alone and they won't come in here and affect the cubs in any way. Now they've all had a good feed and off back to go and play, I think. The two females here are just completely down. Now if you look on her tummy, she's just lifted her leg. And if you look carefully there, see how her hair... Oh, no, don't close your leg now. I wanted to show you just how the hair around her teeth is completely missing. It's almost balded there from the rough tongues of these cubs as they've suckled and it's always an indication that a female has cubs and so when we were talking about the Inkahuma pride and that cub that they were with the one time and we were saying that they don't have any suckle marks it's very evident when a female has cubs that fur around those teeth goes completely bald always very matted from where they would have suckled if you compare the two lionesses now hopefully the other one will come over you can see here she does actually have marks where cubs have suckled but it doesn't look like any time recently so the hair is starting to grow back now you can see there it was at some point quite bald and now the hair is starting to grow back it's a little bit shorter on those back teeth than the top teeth and there's no actual swelling around the teeth that would tend to suggest that there is milk if the mother stands up or rolls like that at some point we'll see a very different look to her stomach it'll be completely bald and it'll be matted and almost circular around if the hair is there almost circular around those teeth that would tend to then suggest that she's still nursing and suckling so if this female did have cubs i don't 
think they are still around because it doesn't look like she's producing any milk at the moment. Her tummy is big and fat, but that's not from milk. That's from feeding or something. And I wonder what Hosanna had this morning that these guys stole. Because whatever it was, is it's quite substantial. Because all three females tend to have quite big bellies. And the cubs are not exactly thin either. And so it must have been something fairly large. Maybe an impala female or impala male. That would have definitely filled the bellies as much as what we're seeing now. But there's some yawning going on, so I think it's almost time for these guys to wake up. So it would be really nice if they get up and move and go down towards Twin Dams again and we get them all lined up along the bank drinking together. I've been waiting a long time to see a image like that and hopefully we'll be able to show you all tonight. But there's definitely some sort of stirring with these lionesses at the moment. I was just telling Craig though, my favorite thing is when these lionesses lie like this, often you'll find their front paw goes onto their chest and they actually scratch themselves with that front paw, it always makes me laugh. Exquisite Bliss, they do get irritated from suckling, you'll find sometimes the females are not in the mood at all, especially when it's a hot sort of part of the day and the late in the mornings and all these cubs come bounding up and climbing all over their mother and trying to kind of get there and they fight with one another and sometimes in their overzealousness of trying to feed, they'll actually bite down too hard on the, on the nipple and it'll hurt them and then you'll find the females growl and hiss and actually stand up and move away and walk away and are not interested in these sort of cubs at all so you'll find a case that it does get a bit much after a while now you know it's awesome when you can hear the scratching I'm just keeping quiet so you can actually hear her scratching look how gentle she is around the eye close when you get to see that that is so cool now Stacy you're asking if the milk will stop her production of milk will stop after a set period of time well yes that's exactly what happens so as the cubs start get we getting weaned the female knows that those cubs are getting bigger and she'll start slowing down on production of milk and then she'll eventually dry up completely and there'll be no milk produced at all. This is so cool. Well, David, you're wondering if the cubs get water from the milk. Well, David, there is an element of, of water within milk that helps to hydrate the cubs, most definitely, but these cubs will drink water. You'll find if they do go down to twin dams, they will all line up and probably drink the cubs included, but there is an hydration content in that milk. Remember, when these cubs are born, they are completely brined. They are not able to really move for themselves, and so they have to be able to get water from the milk itself to be able to survive. So there is a water component to milk, and that definitely means that they can hydrate from it. Interestingly enough, when cats show mange like this, you're going to find that they're going to drink actually more than they would have had they not had the mange. And the reason for that is that the mange causes dehydration, and so they then go to water a lot more often to then kind of counteract that. But yes, they will get moisture content from the milk itself. Are you doing your Sunday yoga? Tell you what, she's a lot more flexible than many others in this world. I wonder if this is now time to start going. Imagine if she goes, this other female will also get up and start moving in that direction. What you do find with lions is they often do this, is they'll get up and then the rest of the pride goes and there'll be a bit of a greeting going on. Now you can see she's yawning, which is a typical sign that she might stand up. She's getting air into the body, just getting that lactic acid moving from lying down all day, filling the lungs with air, and then she'll stand up and start going back towards where that other female is. Also, what they do is when they wake up at this time, they all kind of separate out and they'll actually go and have a little bit 
of a sort of toilet time and they go away from one another and they'll have a bit of a pee and then they will go and maybe defecate as well and then rejoin. I'm sure she's going to get up any time now. She's starting to yawn and that's normally an indication that she's going to go. Now the thing is I'm waiting for her to go because the reason why is this pathway going straight up here that the lions have all used is the easiest way to get there. If I have to now go back to them I have to do a big loop round all the way to the big trees in the background there so it's really a long way away. So I'm going to hope that this female does get up and move towards where the cubs are because it will make my life much easier and hopefully we'll then get a greeting of them all together and the whole pride and then they stand up and start to walk. Wouldn't it be fantastic if they do get up and they just start pushing further north and we end up seeing these lions tomorrow morning deeper inside Juma. It would be a really good way to sort of spend our evening and to know that the lions are going to spend more time here. The problem with the sticks is that they do move a lot. Last night they were seen on Chitwa crossing in from the Mulawanini into Torchwood and then during the night they moved all the way to this side and then lay down here. So. The chances of them being this side tomorrow morning is probably not great, but, well, one can hope. Now she's still just grooming herself, which is also typical of a lioness when before she moves is yawning, grooming. That's all signs that she is starting to think about getting going. But she's definitely also dropping bombs while she's sitting here because there's a nice putrid meat smell that's coming my way. Craig, can you smell it? Is it pleasant? No. No, no it's not at all. Is it making you hungry, Craig? No. Uh, quite <laughs> Craig's kind of got this face as though this is not the most pleasant thing that he's ever smelt in the world. So Let's see now if she's going to get up. I think she will shortly. You can actually see where she's grooming it. You see these little lines on her leg as the rough tongue sort of combs the hair in a different direction. Now I'm going to stay with them, like I said, and we'll just see what happens and where they go because we don't have that much longer left of the drive and it's a very pleasant way to end the day in this beautiful dusk period. And somebody else that is enjoying the dusk, not too far from where I am, is the ever-present Miss McCurdy, and so let's go across to her and see what she's got to say about the day coming to an end.